All right, I'm back working with uh, John Bedini's uh, Earthlight, and uh, this is the circuit that I'm uh, I'm currently trying out. Uh, this is a bifiler coil, uh, similar to his SSG uh, type of bifiler coil. Uh, he specified a um, welding rod in here, and I didn't have it, so I used a piece of coat hanger, and it worked. But it's uh, 45 feet of uh, 30 gauge wire um, in a bifiler, 45 feet uh, each of two strands and it's just wound around uh, this uh, solid core. Now I put a sleeve in there and I made this so that I can tune it by moving that inductor uh, rod in and out. And then there's the circuit there and I added a part right here and a part here and a part here to make this a blinking on off um, automatic light and uh, I'm calling this uh, the Bedini lid motor light and I hope you don't mind this John but there was enough of this thing in here of mine that I didn't want to just call it yours and I didn't want to call it mine because you uh, specified the inductor and the transistor and basically the circuit but this is an infrared um, photo transistor that when light hits it it allows the current to go this way and it shorts out the base and stops this oscillator from oscillating and I found this worked very very simply these two capacitors right here uh, what they do is they set up an oscillation back and forth like a tank circuit and cause this to blink now this is the special cell that I'm using which is the heart of this whole project and uh, the one I'm using here this is the little circuit right here is magnesium and carbon and uh, a copper wire and it's uh, very very uh, simple but the heart of it is the uh, alum and distilled water electrolyte that uh, I barely got this wet with the alum and um, distilled water and I let it dry out and then used a hair dryer on it to completely dry it out and it still operates this little circuit. You know, watch the little LED come on here when I shade the light. Goes off, goes on. And you notice that's blinking. Now, I, as this gets darker, that blinks faster and faster and faster. And uh, this is what I wanted. I wanted something that uh, when it starts to get dark, it starts to blink, and then it gets faster and faster until it's basically on. And the reason I like them to blink is they use less energy that way. So you can get away with a real small battery source. And this is running at about 200 microamps. Uh, when it shuts off, it's drawing about 100 microamps. And that's about a volt, uh, volt and a half when it's not loaded. It's about half a volt when it's loaded up and running the oscillator. And that's John's inductor right there. That's the one that's the bifiler, and this is the little tuning rod that I can move in and out to adjust frequency. The big thing is the capacitors and the resistor here on the base to adjust the frequency. Now, I had a really, really hard time finding the alum, and the alum, I found out, um, is in a steptic pencil, and uh, that's what they call a steptic pencil right there and uh, you can take that and put that in distilled water and swish it around and make this solution of alum and distilled water. The activated charcoal or carbon came from Walmart and uh, that's what they sell in their aquarium supply stores and this activated carbon is extremely porous and that worked great to bump the amperage up and then of course I'm just using a copper wire and magnesium ribbon and uh, this very, very simple little battery that's just a piece of paper between the two dissimilar metals, uh, masking tape on the outside, and that's the construction of it right there. And um, like I say, the electrolyte is uh, magnesium, I'm sorry, um, water and alum is the electrolyte. But then I dry it out, and what we're studying now is the crystalline structure when that dries out. And like I say, this is running with a dried out battery. And this is what, uh, there's a lot of discussion at the Energetic Forum about this particular type of battery. Now, I would imagine there's H2O trapped inside that. And there's still a galvanic process going on. 
but it's greatly reduced. And over here, this uh, motor has been running now for a couple of weeks. And uh, on this uh, on this battery here, I went ahead and uh, uh, used that alum on that, and uh, basically it's not deteriorating. And this is what uh, John uh, found out was that the alum will slow down that corrosion process. And I'm sure it's probably still going on because I do have this in a bottle with that fog that we talked about, John. But this thing is running and running and running. And I don't see any major deterioration in the magnesium. And uh, I'm pretty pleased with how this is working out. So anyway, um, you can go over to the energetic forum at the Earth Battery Thread and uh, find out more that's going on with this project. But uh, this is where I'm at right now with this... Uh, basically dry battery that's running an automatic light. Alright, thanks for watching.